Hello, the purpose of this video is to show you how to limit the maximum available current to your batteries using Midnight Classic charge controllers uh, without limiting the maximum available current to your uh, to your inverter or your, your other loads. I have way too many solar panels for two batteries up here, so I would totally fry these batteries if I hooked them all up without this limit. All right, let's say you have a lot of solar panels and a small battery bank. So for the sake of this argument, we're gonna hook up these two 12 volt batteries in series for a 24 volt system. And their max rating is 50 amps in. The manufacturer only wants them to charge at 50 amps max. Since they're in series, it does not double the amperage. The amperage is still maximum of 50 amps. Disregard all these other batteries and stuff. Right now, let's just say we only had these two hooked up. So, how many amps am I capable of bringing in? I'm capable of bringing in 96 amps plus 96 amps. I've got these two charge controllers maxed out. So, so how many amps am I bringing in right now? 71 amps. That's more than the 50 amps that's bad for the batteries okay so let's limit that go to charge go over to limits go to the output and let's lower that to 50 amps and push enter to save there now let's go back to status and see there we go we're not going to put out more than 50 amps now kind of sounds like a waste of energy. Uh, what if my inverter is consuming more than 50 amps? And I can't get that to focus here. Uh-oh. My inverter is actually consuming 115 amps. 2600 watts. That's My house is using 2600 watts, so to limit this to 50 amps is ridiculous so we need a better way um, I also have the other problem of the other charge controller is also putting out you know 75 amps at the same time so we have to limit that one to 50 amps and this one to 50 amps and that would be 50 plus 50 is 100 amps that would be too much for that and not enough for this so we could reduce this to 25 reduce that to 25 and now we just have this huge waste of potential I'm actually pulling power out of the batteries right now. Even though I have power available from the sun, but it's limited because I had to turn the limit down. So what we need to do is we need to actually measure, instead of how much power this is putting out, we need to measure how much power is actually going into the battery. These units need to know how much power is actually going into the battery versus how much is going to the house so that they can you know, step up their amperage. So let's do that. So I found out through a lot of research that if you get a shunt, which is basically just a very small, uh, well, it's, it's a very big resistor. It's just a resistor. So if you run all the power into the battery through this and you measure the voltage across that and you do some math, you can, you can calculate how many amps are going through it. So these Midnight Classics come with a power meter called a Whizbang Junior. Now, that Whizbang Junior is useless until you buy one of these. You have to buy one of these. And then you have to put this on the negative battery wire. Bolt it on here and put bolt the wire on there so all the power is forced to flow through this thing. I didn't put it here, I actually put it inside this box. So I bolted the Whizbang Junior to here across these two terminals and then I installed one of these inside there so all the power coming from and to these batteries goes through this and then the Whizbang Junior has a little wire that goes into here so that this knows how much power is actually going into the battery but how do we tell it to look at this instead so that it knows what to do well it's a secret and I'll show you. 
All right. Well, uh, let me switch this back to uh, 100 amps real quick here so I don't drain my batteries. Output, let's go back up. Ooh, never heard the fan turn on that fast before. Without the help of this one. There we go, 96, that's my max. Okay, now this one will help a lot more. It takes a minute for it to, for it to realize that I changed the setting, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so, on to this. So we gotta push the main menu button as many times as it takes to get to the, until charge is highlighted. And this kit, okay, just once for this time, but keep pushing it until you see charge highlighted. And then scroll to the right until you see tweaks highlighted. And then push enter. And then push the more button, which is this soft button right here. Now here's the secret. You have to hold the left button down and push this button two times up here, this more button. One, two. Now the secret menu. So you're looking for address 4405. So push up or down until you get to address 4405. There we go. All right, so we want the value. We, remember, we, remember we wanted only 50 amps to go into the battery's max, right? So to change this to 50 amps, it has to be 50, I don't know why, but for some reason times 10. So 50 times 10 is 500. So let's change that to 500. That's going to take a long time. Hold it, holding it down, it scrolls pretty slowly. But if you push this button at the same time, it actually goes faster. So I'm going to push up, and then I'm going to push that button once. There we go. That got us halfway there. I'm going to pause the video. All right. Now, in order to save it, kind of another secret. You can't just push Enter to save. Watch. Nothing happens. For some reason, the Enter button won't work unless you push this button and hold it down, and then push Enter. Now it's saved. All right, so now this one should be limited to, they're not limited to, this one can, this one can put out 96 amps. But it will make sure that, that it doesn't help contribute to putting more than 50 amps into the battery. So let's look at how much amperage is going through this, which is in there, how much is actually going into the batteries right now? All right, in order to see that menu, you got to go to the Whizbang Junior menu. So let's go to status. Sometimes the button doesn't really work for me, but there we go. All right, so right now we're putting 38 amps into the battery. This is actually how much is going into the battery. Our inverter might be consuming, you know, 100 amps. That's 105 amps. So, but this is actually how much is going into the battery. So right now we're actually charging the battery, you know, at, at 10 amps right now, even though we're, cons we're consuming a lot of amperage still. So that's good. Now, in order to, in order to get this one to control itself, people have talked about trying to tie that Wizbang Junior into both. Here's the purple wire that comes from that Wizbang Junior. Right now it's going up. It's plugged into this one. And could you plug it into both at the same time? I'm not really sure. Um, the recommendations from Midnight Classics say to get another Wizbang Junior and bolt it to the top of that one. So you would only need one of these and you would bolt two Wizbang Juniors onto here. One, and then you'd put some spacers between the two and then bolt on another one. But you'd have to get longer screws. So there's another way to do this without buying another Wizbang Junior if you don't happen to have one. Um, so you can you can make your battery bank large enough to actually handle the full amount of amperage from this. So this is can max out at 96 amps. So in order to do that, instead of this just two batteries able to absorb 50 amps, I'm going to hook up four batteries. So here's my other two. So I got those hooked up. Now I can actually safely absorb 100 amps. So I can go to this menu and I can go into the charge and go to the limits. And I can make sure that this is all the way up to 100 amps. So now I'm safe. This one can be maxed out 
putting all its power into the batteries. And if I have no load, this one will back off. But if my load goes up, this one will start putting out a lot of power. So, um, however, if it starts to get a little bit cloudy, and let's say this one's only putting out 50 amps, this one can see that uh, the batteries, you know, are capable of, of consuming 100 amps. So it'll actually pitch in the other 50 amps to help to help get that up. So, you know, it just it works pretty seam seamlessly, and you know, I've I've watched the the uh, the amps coming into the house. I, like, I had my wife turn on the toaster, and these things responded instantly. There was no draw from the batteries. It didn't you know take from the batteries for a second, and then start taking from the sun. It actually it just came straight from the sun. There was no drop in voltage. Uh, the uh, there was no change in the amount of amperage. The amount of amperage that was going into the battery didn't change at all when she started the, started up the toaster in there. So what am I still still consuming? 100 amps, 2,500 watts. I've got the uh, the toaster oven on, toaster oven, and a whole bunch of other things just for the purpose of this test. All right, so I will put in the description. The, uh, the written instructions for going through the menus and uh, and setting that up. Um, you'll have to, you know, you'll have to look up the instructions on installing this and the Whizbang Junior yourself if you haven't done that already. All right, so I just got done doing some testing, and although this charge controller is is watching the current going into the batteries and it's limited and it's helping to, to regulate that. It's also, um, the, the main current output limit also kind of overrides that. So if you go into the basic charge menu and you just go over to limits, this, this easy to change output maximum amperage limit is still relevant. So this should basically be at the maximum. The maximum meaning you know 100 amps 96 amps whatever as high as, as high as you can get it you can see is I, I can't get it any higher I can try and then it just goes back to 96 so yeah just make sure that uh, that that's all the way up because you're not really you don't really need that to be or you, you, you don't need to reduce the maximum amperage ability of this unit anymore because you have the the other one in the secret menu doing that uh, much more intelligently. Uh, so here's my toasty toaster oven. He's just heating up a, a uh, pot of water in it for that test. So I wanted to say though that um, don't get confused. Don't get confused with the um, with the max amperage thing. You know, when you're charging your batteries, you have a hard enough time just trying to get them to full as it is, and it's bad for them to be dead. So, you know, it's probably better to overcharge them a little bit than to risk not having fully charged them throughout the day. And that's true, especially with flooded lead-acid batteries, and less so much with uh, sealed and, and uh, AGM batteries. So, since those test batteries were AGMs, I thought it would be good to um, stick by the manufacturer's specs and not not do any forced overcharging with them. And I did test it. You know, I I uh, I cranked up the ability, and those batteries absorbed well more than they were supposed to. Um, so they they can be overcharged. Uh, they're charged too rapidly, even though the voltage is still under the the maximum bulk recommendation or the absorb set point, I mean. So, over and out.